Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In this video, what I'm going to do is review Fedora Workstation version 42, which was released last week. It's an awesome release. It's gone very well for me. I installed it on two different machines, and in this video, you're going to see it in action. The latest release features GNOME 48, which is an awesome desktop environment. It has some amazing features like triple buffering and HDR, which I can't wait to tell you guys about. And in this video, you're going to learn all about Fedora 42. And like I mentioned, I decided to check out the new release on two different computers. First, my System76 Pangolin laptop, which I've reviewed recently on this channel and was also the subject of my recent daily driver video. This one was already running Fedora, so I decided to upgrade it. On the other hand, I have this notebook right here. My ThinkPad X1 Carbon is a bit older, but I wanted to test the installation process because there's a brand new installer this time around. So you'll see the upgrade process and you'll also see the installation process. In fact, on this channel, I always use real hardware for all of my distro reviews. And if that's something that you like, well, definitely subscribe to this channel for more where this came from. And we'll get started with reviews shortly. But before we do, I wanted to let you guys know that I have a brand new PDF available that will give you tips for switching to Linux. So that way you can get even more information for those of you that need a helping hand when it comes to starting out. By donating just $15 to Learn Linux TV and supporting my channel, you'll get this PDF, which will have all kinds of tips. In fact, it's over 40 pages long, so you should definitely check it out. As always, thank you guys so much for supporting Linux Learning. I really appreciate it. Now it's time to dive into the latest release, so let's do that right now. And let's begin with what's new this time around, most notably GNOME 48. GNOME is the chosen desktop for Fedora's workstation release, and version 48 of the desktop sees some important enhancements. And while there's a good number of smaller tweaks and fixes in the new release, I'll go over some of the highlights, starting with performance improvements. This new version of GNOME features something called triple buffering, a feature that's been in development for quite some time. Triple buffering aims to increase GNOME's performance, and it does this by making better use of rendering hardware, especially on low-end GPUs. Now, whether or not you'll see a benefit from this depends solely on your specific hardware, but on both my Pangolin and ThinkPad, I noticed a pretty big difference. I also noticed that desktop animations seem to be much smoother. For example, moving an application window across the screen seems to be much more smooth. As an aside, triple buffering has existed in Ubuntu for quite a while now. In fact, Ubuntu was instrumental when it comes to developing it. The difference now is that this feature is now a core part of the GNOME desktop, so other distributions will benefit from this too, as it's a change in GNOME 48 that's not limited to Fedora 42. Another change that's very welcome this time around is the addition of HDR for supported displays. If your hardware supports this, you'll see an option to enable it within your display settings. The combination of this with triple buffering support means that Fedora 42 will take better advantage of your hardware than it ever has before. Like I mentioned, it all depends on your specific hardware, but I think most people will notice a benefit of some kind. Continuing with new GNOME features, another development sees the inclusion of a feature dubbed well-being that helps you keep track of screen time, even as far as setting limits or reminding you to take a break. To access this feature, you'll see it within GNOME's Settings app, and once you click on it, you'll see a screen time graph as well as some helpful toggles. Of course, this feature will be useful only for those of you that track this sort of thing, but it's a welcome addition nonetheless. Other than that, there's a ton of new features in GNOME 48, but most are tweaks and adjustments that may or may not be noticeable. For example, there's a new default font, notifications are now stackable, and there's also various theme and appearance tweaks. It seems to me that GNOME's development is seeing fewer and fewer major new features, which implies that it's hit its stride and is focusing more on refinement than drastic changes. And I think for those of you that simply want a desktop that just works, it's a really great fit. GNOME aside, there's a pretty big change when it comes to Fedora itself. The Workstation Edition now features a brand new installer. And this is a welcome surprise for me. For as long as I can remember, every version of Fedora that I've reviewed in recent memory has had the same installer. But all that's changed in Fedora 42. This time around, the installer has been completely rewritten, and it's also very simple to use. In fact, it makes Fedora easier to install than it's ever been. 
All you really need to do is choose your language and then your installation type, and that's about it. Installation completed very quickly for me. On my old X1 Carbon, Fedora was installed in just under 7 minutes. When it comes to my Pangolin, which is the same machine I talked about during my daily driver video, that machine was already running Fedora, so I decided to upgrade it. And you know what? It was super easy as well. All I had to do was open GNOME Software and then go to the Updates tab. Several hours after the Fedora project announced the new release, it popped up in a banner message. All I had to do was click the download button, and then after that, my machine rebooted and it started to upgrade my system. For me and my Pangolin, the upgrade process took around 16 minutes, which is significantly longer than a fresh install, but it's not an unreasonable amount of time, so it didn't bother me. Overall, when it comes to new features, there's not a huge number of those to mention that will change your life, but for me, Fedora 42 has been a very smooth experience. My first impression was that for the most part, Fedora 42 is mostly the same as Fedora 41. Nothing major really stands out as different, at least not visually. Just like before, we have a cartoonish wallpaper, the same default GNOME configuration with the usual things in their usual places, and the same software stack as well. But then again, Fedora 41 was very reliable, with the first class implementation of the GNOME desktop that, in my opinion, sets the standard for others to compete against. Fedora 42 is more of the same, and that's a good thing. But when you add some really exciting changes, such as triple buffering and HDR, Fedora feels more complete with version 42, and the performance tweaks make it much more responsive during my usage than it was with 41. And I really like how tightly integrated GNOME is within Fedora. Everything just seems to work. Touchpad gestures, system updates, you name it. GNOME feels more at home in Fedora than it does with other distributions. I was even able to update the firmware on my X1 Carbon through GNOME software. I didn't have to reboot into Windows or download another app. It was listed right there on the Updates tab, and it worked like a charm. Also, the default software selection is pretty great, too. We get Firefox as the default browser, LibreOffice, Linux kernel version 6.14, and it even has built-in virtualization support, which gives us the ability to spin up virtual machines immediately after installing Fedora. There's nothing to tweak or otherwise mess with, it works out of the box. Now I covered this particular app, GNOME Boxes, in a previous video, so if you're curious how that works, check it out. In fact, I'll leave a card for that video right about here. Anyway, when it all comes down to it, I absolutely recommend that you try Fedora 42. Now if you're already running Fedora, maybe an earlier version, you should definitely upgrade. And while it may not look all that different from previous releases, there's refinements just about everywhere and some really good performance boosts, so what's not to love? And there's my review. Like I mentioned a few times, I really enjoyed using Fedora 42. It's now on my daily driver. It's going very well. The upgrade process was smooth. The installation process was smooth. I really like the new installer. I think the Fedora team has done a great job. So congratulations, Fedora developers. You put out a really good product, and I really appreciate it. What did you guys think of Fedora 42? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the new release, and I'll see you in the next video.